It's Thursday, January 6th, and the time for your Bobby Yesterday Morning News update. There's a call for opposition parties to come together to take legal action to either force authorities to make provisions for COVID-19 patients to vote or delay the January 19th general election. It's coming from the leader of the Alliance Party for Progress, Bishop Joseph Atherley, who says if neither action is taken, thousands of eligible voters will be robbed of their right to vote. His calls follows an announcement by the Electoral Lands Boundaries Commission that COVID-19 positive persons who are qualified to vote but are in isolation are prohibited from leaving their homes to cast their ballots. Atherley also raised concerns about the current rise in COVID-19 cases. Multiple thousands of people, through no fault of their own, will not be able to vote in this next election, and especially if these trends continue. Now, I, I said this from the beginning. I had a meeting with the Electoral and Boundaries Commission about, a, what, four or five days ago, and I said it then. These people are not at fault. Now, if you're in the QEH hospital, you're lying on, the, on your back, and so forth, you can't come out to vote. That is fine, we understand that. That is, that is a matter where you really can't, you don't have the physical mobility, the medical capacity to come out and do it. But these people can vote, all for the exception that the government says they must stay at home. Now I want you people to hear this, and hear me carefully, I am no lawyer, but I believe that that is something that can be challenged. The representation of the People's Act says that everything must be put in place, that people who are qualified to vote must be able to vote. The Constitution of Barbados says, the Constitution of Barbados says that any electoral law, and the representation of the People's Act is an electoral law, any electoral law must be of such substance that every practical effort is made to facilitate people in the exercise of their right to vote. Bishop Atherley says Barbadians need to stand up and take stock of the situation. I'm further calling on the opposition parties in Barbados to join me in mounting a protest to that. Whether we take legal action and ask for some kind of judicial review, my understanding as well is that the Constitution of Barbados suggests very clearly in the event of an emergency, an election date can be changed. And the government should be giving serious consideration to changing this election date. Now, a state of emergency is the circumstance in which that change can be made. And we are in the middle of a, cha a state of emergency, and we are in the middle of the pandemic which brought about that state of emergency in the first place. This is a very serious matter. Meantime, at a COVID-19 update held on Wednesday, Prime Minister Mia Motley gave no indication that the general election could be in jeopardy amid the rise in COVID-19 cases in the country. Instead, she again maintained that the challenges ahead must be tackled as one nation. And when people ask, but why would you call an election now? I made the point that we are literally trying to fight these things as one nation and that in those circumstances it is critical that we put this behind us. And why? If there was any doubt about this being a marathon, the news in recent days of a variant coming out of France should tell us that we remain at risk and that there is no telling what continues to lie ahead of us as we go forward. We are not even good into Omicron. But we're talking about a new variant potentially. And we are not even good into vaccinating numbers globally in Africa and in Latin America sufficiently so that we know that the risk for us to have these new variants will continue for some time. We are asking Barbadians, therefore, work with us and to understand that the whole concept of self-isolation puts on you the responsibility to mask and double mask if you have to but the bottom line is do not mix and mingle if you know you're positive barbados records another covid 19 related death a 14 year old boy succumbed to complications from covid 19 bringing the total number of deaths from the virus to 264. Head of the COVID-19 isolation facilities, Dr. Corey Ford, at Wednesday's COVID-19 update, revealed that the teenager had underlying conditions. We lost a 
young child at our Enmore facility um, who was the age of 14, um, who had other underlying um, conditions, which I'm unable to discuss certainly uh, at this meeting, um, but he, he was extremely ill. And our, for our group at isolation and on behalf of the pediatric team, we give condolences um, to the family with regards to that particular aspect. But be assured that certainly for us in isolation and those in the Ministry of Health, that we're going to continue to fight to get past this particular surge. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To developments in the region now, the union representing teachers in Guyana is calling for the immediate closure of schools across the country. The call comes as the country continues to record high numbers of COVID-19 cases. More from News Source Guyana. The Guyana Teachers Union is calling for the immediate closure of schools across the country. Two days after schools reopened their doors for face-to-face -face learning. The call comes as the country has found itself in the middle of a spike in new COVID-19 cases. In a statement, the Ghana Teachers Union said based on its own assessment, since the reopening of schools on Monday, 65 teachers and more than 40 students have tested positive for COVID-19. The union said while at least 15 schools have been forced to close their doors because of the pandemic, many other schools have remained open, although cases have been confirmed among staff and students. The GTU said based on visits to school, there are no social distancing guidelines being followed in many classrooms as students are seated close to each other and in many cases two students are sharing one bench. The GTU is demanding that schools be closed immediately to facilitate testing and sanitizing of the school environment. The union said while it understands the challenges presented by online learning and that reopening of schools for face-to-face -face learning is the preferred option, persons must also be mindful that a healthy nation is needed for progress. And finally, health authorities in the U.S. are urging schools to remain open despite an increase in COVID-19 cases. More from Reuters TV. With the Omicron variant igniting a record-setting surge of COVID-19, school administrators are grappling over how and whether to keep classrooms open. In Chicago, officials canceled classes Wednesday after the teachers voted late Tuesday to return to remote learning and pushed for better safety protocols, citing concerns over the highly contagious Omicron variant. The teachers have called for in-school COVID testing and mandatory vaccinations. Cities including Milwaukee, Atlanta and Detroit this week either implemented online instruction or delayed returns to school due to staff shortages and Omicron concerns. Though most public school districts nationwide opted to stay open, like in New York City, a relief for some parents eager to keep kids in class. So we're really happy that they're keeping the schools open and that the governor and the mayor is trying to keep, do their best to keep the schools open. The rolling seven-day average number of new COVID cases in the United States hit 540,000 Tuesday. The country shattered global records for a single day with nearly one million new infections on Monday, according to a Reuters tally. But despite the staggering numbers, the Biden administration and health officials are urging schools to keep their doors open. White House COVID-19 response coordinator Jeff Zients said the federal government has provided funding for better ventilation and testing and that widespread vaccinations make schools safe. That's news.
But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.